Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are talking about 10 people that we are jealous of each. Ooh. So potentially 20, unless there's crossover. There might be crossover, I don't know. We don't reveal think, these lists I to think, each other. I don't know your list, but I feel like we're gonna be jealous of the same people. There might be 100% crossover. What if that happened? I'd be People would be so jealous um, of us. Well, I, the reason I don't think that's gonna happen is because um, this wasn't as this wasn't as easy, or even though like coming up with like your favorite artists or your favorite albums or whatever is not yeah. easy, but there's a narrow field. It's like I'm choosing from albums. <laughs> when you're choosing from anyone that you can be jealous of, it's right. like well, there's people you can be jealous of people for all kinds of different reasons. As I think, I tried to capture in the list. Yeah, the in, when we did the top ten inspirations, it kind of as I started to think about it, momentum started to build, and a ranking, a, a loose ranking started to take form. With this, it's more of like, well, I don't know if this is good for my mental health, but I think it is. Just to put it out there, just to put out the jealousy and just kind of put it in its place. But then I started having trouble coming up with specific people and I'm like, well, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm not that jealous. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm just not, I'm just not thinking of everybody. Man, I, I bet put, Rhett's gonna jog my memory I, and I'm gonna be like, man, I'm a jealous person. Well, I, I don't see, I guess I didn't take this as the negative side of jealousy, which obviously jealousy is not good in general, but people who have something, there's some aspect of their lives that I would like to have in my life. Yeah. That's how I That's how I went about this. I think it really hits home. There's a couple on my list that like, the sweet spot for me is I could see that it could be me or I want it to be me. And so there's like actual, Jealousy of like, man, I, I'm, I almost I'm envious of what this person has is doing or is able to do because I feel like I should be in that person's position. <gasps> well, there's I, a few of them. I don't think there's anybody on my list that I actually feel like I could aspire to. Who, all to right, them. well, in uh, one one qualifier <clears throat> that we did discuss ahead of time, we didn't put each other on each oh, other's yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Because we could do a whole episode about things that we're jealous of each other about. Um, I'm not saying we're going to. It might be a good episode idea. I think it is like an episode idea and like the long list of episode ideas. Speaking of episode ideas, last week, boy, I had, I had a fun time listening to those voicemails. One eight 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 earpod one. Listen up. When you are listening to us right now and you have some sort of reaction. I want you to call that number and leave a verbal reaction. I would love to be able to put uh, reactions to the episode at the end of episodes. If we get enough good ones, just like as kind of a closing credits thing. Reaction to just the previous episode. To the previous, yeah. To like I mean, a, that would be impossible. Pre, the, yeah, the previous episode. Uh, I used to listen to a podcast called Sound Opinions a lot. I've fallen out of it. Sometimes I go back to it depending on what albums they're reviewing. Um, but they do that at the end of their podcast and I always like it. Oh, I love the voicemails, yeah. And even the f reactions to the previous episode montage at the end is specifically what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. One eight 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 earpod one Now, in that episode, we pushed something we were gonna talk about at the beginning that I think you've totally forgotten about, but I remember and I think we can make it into a whole episode as early as next week. You remember? I do. I do, but then I thought we We talked about the fight that we had instead of talking about the thing that you had on your laptop, which I don't want to reveal. But you think involving I, lyrics. You think we can make oh, you think we can make a whole episode out of lyrics? Well, no. We didn't tell people what it was, so I don't want to give it away, but like Okay. Cuz I thought we ca there was two episode ideas in that. Oh. One was talking about which I'll just go ahead and say this one cuz we're not going to do it now cuz I the story started with me uh the fact that Shepard is going to like a middle school dance and Locke is going to prom. Oh, not that. 
And, that, that's and, and I was like, oh, well, we can't do that now because everybody's will have gone to their dances right. and their proms, but. Until, so next year we when, it's, when we're gearing up for that. dance season. Because I got lots of great dad advice about both of these events. Yeah, we'll have to, events. We'll, have to we'll have to hit that in, uh, in the next dance and season. And Shepard, because Shepard started asking me, was like, what was, what was your middle school dance like? And I was like, oh, you have, you've asked your dad a great question. So. Which led to you wanting to talk about the lyrics to a specific song that we were into at that age. That Which I now, played for him on the way into school. Now reading it back, it's like, so I think that analysis of the lyrics that went over our heads as middle schoolers. Is a good idea for is a, a whole Is a episode. fun episode. I agree with that. Maybe as early as next week. Maybe oh, as early as next week. Let us know. Hashtag your biscuits, let us know what lyrics from songs went over your head as a kid. I'm making this a prompt. Do it now. Oh gosh. And then maybe in the next episode. But probably not in the next episode. I don't know episode. how the timing works. Probably for not recording. in the next episode. But it's true. Probably two episodes from now. Let's get in our list. Do you want to go first of who you're jealous of? You want me to go first? You go first. You want to rock, paper, scissors? You go first. I can hit you with a banger using the parlance of this person. And if somebody. As, number, as my first one. If somebody on your list. Uh, is better than, I'm more jealous of somebody on your list, I have to choose somebody on my list to knock off. Or vice oh. versa. Oh that really? That be fun, yeah. So the episode <laughs> like withers away, the ending of the episode dissolves. No, I'll still, of the we'll still talk about all of them, but you know. Oh, but they'll go off of the list. I've had, I wasn't really precious about the order, and matter of fact, this is my number nine that I'm not making my number 10 because I wanna hit you with this. Okay. Cuz I think this is this one's this one's real. This is one of those ones that like I feel a little uncomfortable putting out there. Oh. And I'm just going to do it. Uh I am freaking jealous of Mr. Beast. Oh, okay, see. Yeah, I didn't think Fre about it. You know, freaking Mr. Beast, man. Now, uh I've had a I've had a one-on-one -on -one, I've had a personal phone conversation with Jimmy. You know? Did you tell the me you're person, jealous of him? The person behind Mr. Beast, it's been, it's, it's been it might have been a year ago. Well, yeah, it was definitely in pandemic times. And okay, you may be saying, well, why are you jealous of Mr. Beast? Of course, because he's like so, he's popping. Because he's on the cover of Rolling Stone. That's why. <laughs> Dude got on the cover of a magazine that gets delivered to my house. I don't want, you know, I, I, like, I like getting the Rolling Stone magazine. I like, I mean, I've had this secret dream. What if, you know, it's it's one of those iconic things to be on the cover of the Rolling Stone. There's <laughs> even a song about it, being on the cover of the Rolling Stone. And I don't want another creator coming on coming on a magazine in my home. That didn't sound right. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely I, like, don't want that. I don't want I don't want another creator showing up. Depending on the type of magazine though. At my though, doorstep. That, that can't happen. On a freaking uh, magazine cover that I enjoy, man, it just, it really brought something up inside of me, jealousy. Like, I, I wanna be on that cover. Y you know but what? But really, dude. You could be there too. But, do, but. I, I, I don't think I have any business being there. Right, we don't deserve to be on the cover. Yeah, but I never thought he did either. But, but he, then but he does. Oh, it's the creator issue. We're not even, we're not even, uh, we're not even in the conversation. Right. And so, here's So it. it's like, yeah, I'm jealous. I and agree that does we- Does Mr. Beast deserve to be on the cover? This is not about Mr. Beast, this is about me. Well, okay. And if, Jimmy, if you think it's about you, call me. You still have my number. And, and if I keep this up, I'm gonna have to call you and pre-apologize. Yeah, I'm trying to cut you off so you can quit digging your I own hole. I thought about calling him and saying, you know what, congratulations, or but at least texting, congratulations on being on the cover of Rolling Stone. But I was, I was too jealous to do it. So he definitely deserves to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. We do not. I can unequivocally say that. He might deserve to be on the cover of Wired or something where they, like for Rolling Stone to all of a sudden have a creator issue is, well, is reaching anyway. If they're doing a creator issue, then he yeah, deserves yeah, to be on the cover of Yeah, 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 swimming so that's in what money. I'm saying. But we deserved to be in the creator issue. I think that. We're just, we're boring. I, we're boring to people like Rolling Stone. Well, yeah. We're, we're not, we're not, I mean. We gotta do something we're, about this headphone placement. We got that boring placement. success, you know? We don't have that flashy swimming in money success. It's like, I mean, we did something wrong, man. 
We should have been we should have been giving away money for years and making a making a big viral hoo hoo about it. Do you it. want my honest opinion on yeah, this, or do you or do you opinion. want me to do, go along with the bit that you're doing? <laughs> my, I'm hot. You think this is a bit? I know you don't actually feel as strongly as you're as you're acting right now. I, okay. I mean, I you, don't know, man. Because you and I both know that yes. I mean, first of all, no one is getting excited about. I mean, I, I'm not saying that we're the victims of ageism, but no one's getting it excited about a 44 year old and 44, 40, well, soon to be 45 and 44 year old dudes, it, like who make YouTube videos and been doing it for as long as we have. He is much flashier and more exciting and his, uh, I mean, just look at the traction that he gets on an individual video. You it's, know, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's like, I wish we could come up with an idea that would, that would do that at this point in our career, but I wouldn't trade our career to do it. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished in terms of like the longevity of our career and the trajectory of our career, but I acknowledge that it's not the kind of thing that should get you on the cover of Rolling Stone because it's kind of a boring story. It would be like, these guys on the cover of Rolling Stone have a very successful digital media company that has been steadily growing for a decade. Who cares? No, well, in terms of hold on, let's say let's say at least fifteen years. Yeah, but I'm saying in terms of uh, from the Rolling Stone level person on the cover of Rolling Stone, you got to be somebody that's it's like this is sensational. Like he, by definition, is a sensational. Like everything that he does is sensational. And so, n name the person that's been on the cover of Rolling Stone who wasn't doing sensational things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my question we, we, is, we are do you not really want to be on the cover of We are not Stone? a sensation, period. And you know what, that's, a, that's been a key to our success. Unsensational. But honestly, I, the moment the article was sent to me, and it was like, hey, to break it to you, but Mr. Beast is on the cover, I read that thing, and the reason why I read it was to make myself feel better about it not being us. It's like, what about, what about this piece on Mr. Beast can make me feel better about not being as sensational as him. And I'm I'm not gonna say how I reacted to certain parts of it, but yeah, it's kinda like when I listen to John Mayer sing and he's talking about how all he, he just, he wishes he had a wife and kids and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good for me to hear. <laughs> Cause I got that. I got something at your age that you don't have. Right, and he doesn't have anything that we want. Uh. <laughs> He has a full sleeve and it's like, I would like to have a full sleeve. He's on my tattoo. list. <laughs> oh, so, oh we'll, okay, we'll, he's not, he's actually. We'll, we'll get to that. He's actually not on my um, list, but I'm not, I'm not done talking about Mr. Beast. I got another 10 minutes of jealousy that I just need well, to work you, out. You should do that on uh, like your side, your, your side project. My side piece? <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've, um, I can move on. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm adding Mr. Beast to my list because I wasn't thinking about any digital creators. It's like I, I you know I started thinking about categories and I didn't think about that. But yeah, I am also jealous of him. Um, you didn't think about digital creators? Interesting. No. Okay. That's again. I and I think this is I think actually this uh, the fact that I didn't think about digital creators is an indication of the way that I think about jealousy. And the way I think about the aspects of the people on my list that I aspire to is it's things that I want. I'm like, I've got the digital creator thing going. Yeah, I'm not on the cover of, of Rolling Stone, yeah. but I wasn't thinking in that category at all. You know what we should do though? And I was to- Move on? I was telling Christy this. <laughs> I think you're gonna be into this. I just wanna go ahead and put it out there. I'm gonna pitch this to you. All right. I've kinda soft pitched this, but you did, I don't think you understood that I meant it. We could be sensational, and I have the way to do it. Oh no no no! I don't want to. No 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 no. Yeah, and this is a, this is a horrible idea. You might get naked. I want us to pose nude. Yeah, you can in do a that. Magazine. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, okay, it's, fine. It, it feels de it feels desperate. It depends on how it looks. I mean, Flula was on the cover of Hustler. Flula was on the cover of Hustler. I would and he looked great. And I, he didn't look desperate, trust I, me. I would box you Nothing before I Nothing about that got Heine naked. looked desperate to me. I, I would, uh, tell us more. I would uh, box I, you before I would get naked. I didn't get to see the inside of the magazine because I didn't he purchase He didn't show it. his dick. 
if that's he, what you're asking. I didn't, yeah, great. I don't want to show my wang either. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm not prepared to do that. Oh no, we'll we'll have to train for it. I but, think it'll be a great way for us personally to like, to really turn a corner. I'll get naked with you in a magazine because I'll have to train in order to be ready, but yes, if I'm gonna train, I'm also going to fight you in a boxing ring. No, I'm not gonna, uh, no, okay. I wanna look pretty. I wanna look, I wanna look. You, we'll take the photos before I beat the, beat, beat the hell out of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's all on the same day. <laughs> the morning is the photo shoot and the night is the boxing match. Dude, I, I, I don't even know, what is this freaking like, Matt Watson got the crap beat out of him by, uh, what, what's his Nathan name? Nathan Barnett. Nathan freaking Barnett just they, went they after call him, the they guy. They call him dad now. Like we just know Nathan because we used to, you know, we made videos back in the day uh, with him. <laughs> I mean, it was and, brutal. Uh, and first of all. I don't know anything about the event. Like no one invited us. Oh, what? Well, but now that we're talking we're about it, they will. we're not sensational enough. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Maybe they think we're above it. We're not above anything. I'm taking it all back. I'm this is for me, this is all a bit. I'm not going to box you. I'm not going to get naked because I just think it I think it's a sign of desperation. And I don't I'm I am i am not I'm not i I'm not saying I'll get I won't get there at some point, but I'm not ready to get I there. I just think it will be fun. Like Christy uh didn't love the idea, but but I'm gonna wear her down. Lando <laughs> he hated the idea. I, so I think it's really like, I think man, Lando might need to be, uh, he might need to graduate from high school before this happens. <laughs> like the last kid needs to be out of the house. Well you're just making it tougher and tougher on yourself. Right, which makes it more sensational. Yeah. Okay, well, we can consider it. When Lando graduates from high school, uh, we'll talk about it again. <laughs> What's your number 10? Um, John ja Morant. Don't know the guy. Girl, I don't know what. What? John Morant? Ja. Ja? Morant. What is that? <laughs> well, what is that? Who is that is a better question. It's um, a, he's a NBA basketball player for the Memphis Grizzlies. And he's like. What? I, I, so I picked an athlete, and this is my number 10, because whenever I watch professional sports, the, I am jealous of the way that these guys can move their bodies and accomplish things physically that I would, I would, you know, my body would break in the process of doing it. And so just like, you, I mean, if you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm not talking to Link, I'm talking to you. To watch this guy play basketball and to, and to can see- Can I take a bathroom break and to, to see him, like you know, I was like, I'm gonna pick somebody from the NBA, who's it gonna be? And then the most exciting, physically impressive, like in terms of what he can absolutely, like he, he's he's like 6'3", but like just flies over people and does all this stuff and he's young, he's like only been in the league like two years. So it's like, I'm yo, I'm gonna pick LeBron, but no, LeBron's like so is old it, now. So it's it's more of like the the athleticism than being a basketball player. You're not jealous of being an NBA player, You're no, 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 of his I, no I'll, I'll take being an NBA player as well. It's not necessarily a lifestyle that I aspire to. It, the, the thing that I am, the, the specific thing that I'm jealous of is just his ability to basically make it look like he's doing magic. You okay. know what I'm saying? So you got somebody like Steph Curry. But the way that this hits home, I think the way that, it's real, that it really is, is true jealousy is like you're feeling the limitations of your own body. And I and I you know I love to compete and I love sports. Okay. And I and I and I All loved right. playing sports. But this is real. I can't even play I, I can't play pickup basketball anymore because it's like uh, I might hurt my back or my oh. shoulders a little bit messed up, you know what I'm saying? So Oh, there's real pain here. I'm, um, so, I'm sorry. So and so instead of picking somebody like Steph Curry who's obviously super exciting to watch, but like Steph just goes up and like lays it in. Yeah. Like John Morant is doing Steph Curry type things, but then he just keeps going to the basket and then jumps over somebody and dunks it. And like, the, I would just love to see you what that feels like. Think there's any amount of training that you could do with the hope that physical therapy has given you with your shoulder that you could be able to play pickup basketball again? Not like John Morant. I know, but to, to, I could be like. The, but the, isn't there a way that you could at least play pickup basketball? I mean. My, yeah, but it wouldn't be fun. My papa's brother. Because I would be like bracing the whole time. Played in a senior citizen basketball league and they were like, 
in back in North Carolina, they were state champions. He was a senior citizen state champion basketball player. He like traveled the state playing basketball. I'm not interested in that. Okay, all right, fine. I, I, if I'm gonna compete, I wanna compete at the highest level, not at the why. Okay. No, I no, I would be in to pick up basketball and I would be maybe doing it if if I if I wouldn't have to be like to, when you have to play in a compromised state and, and you're and you're basically you're like, you know, I would be good. You guys don't know how good I would be. I would actually be contributing, but now I'm just kind of standing there with my with my my stomach flexed to protect my yeah. back. Just say you're posting up. <laughs> yeah, right. See if you know you know. I know. And now I know who that guy is. Check out Sporked. They have rankings that tell you what to get at the grocery store. Do you go to the grocery store? Do you wanna know what, I mean, do you need something to make going shopping at the grocery store more exciting? Well, go to Sporked and they can, give you some, they can give you some things to get excited about that you can try because they've tried it all. And they're adding stuff constantly to the site. I don't know how many items get added in a week or a day, but literally they're constantly tasting stuff. Whenever I see one of the sports people in the office, I'm like, what well, you been tasting that day? And they'll be like, well, I just tried 25 mayonnaises and uh, it's a beautiful I'm, thing. I'm moving on to graham crackers. It, you know, it's like. It blows my mind that people can be critical of sport because it is a freaking service. I mean, it's a freaking service. And there's you know there's there's fun personalities that are contributing to it, um, you know, but, but you're, you're going to be critical of it. <laughs> we, t we touched a nerve. Are you, what, I mean, it's, who, I don't get it. You, I don't get it. critical of it. Some fans are like, you feel like everything you put out, you need to be critical of it. It's the it's a tool that tells you, based on a group of people that we trust, including us, that say this is what you should buy at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> you find a way to complain about it? It's like having somebody out in front of the grocery store is like, hey, here's a list of the best stuff in the grocery store, and you're like, well, yeah, I don't like your list. Spork.com. I don't like your font. All right, here is my number nine. I'm jealous of Lil Yachty. Oh, yeah. Lil good. Yachty, hip hop artist extraordinaire. I met the guy. Lincoln and I met him at the video game awards yep. thing. Uh, you were there. You were not there, you were there. I met him. You were there. Yeah, you met yeah, him too. Yeah. I didn't understand. I didn't know who he was I wish I understood more about like, I what, a, he was a rapper. what an entertaining person he is, just a, even apart from his music career. Uh, he's adventurous. Like Lil Yachty is, he signs up for is adventurous. Cool stuff. And all of that is inspiring, the things on the internet that he shows up on. Lil Yachty, come on Good Mythical Morning. Let's do this. All that's inspiring, but that doesn't make me jealous. The thing that makes me jealous is that he's on the Reese's Puff cereal. Mm. It's a freaking Lil Yachty collab with Reese's he's Puff cereal. He's on the cereal. front of it? He's, he's, it's, it's, it's a special box. Have you got it? Uh, Lincoln has it. Yeah, cut I'm it out, hang I'm, it up. I'm freaking jealous of it. You gotta hold on to that kind of thing. Like I wanna, I wanna, he did, he 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 has it displayed in his room. Oh, good, good, uh, unopened. I go in there sometimes at like two in the morning, thinking if we're out of cereal, I'm gonna eat that Reese Puff cereal that he as has. As long as you open shelf. the box carefully. And I go in there, and Lincoln's still awake. It's like I keep staying up later and later, hoping that like he'll go to sleep so that I can eat that Reese Puff cereal. And no matter how late I stay up, he's always up later because he knows that I'm after that cereal. <laughs> I just feel like. I feel like we should be on a cereal box. We should have. We should be on a cereal, man. It's like. Yeah, I agree with this. It's like if Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty deserves it, but don't. I mean, we have we have a more we have a morning show. People eat cereal and watch it's our show. I think it's tougher to get two people on a box. Well, one of us has got to take the front. One of us has got to take the back. His face is not on it at all. It's just a collab that like. It's just his chest. It's not, it's, it's, uh, it says Lil Yachty on it, but it, does, it doesn't show his face on the front. What, I'm picturing him with a spoon. It's not like with Wheaties. A spoon. That would be awesome. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't do that. But like, even that, so it's at a level that I feel like we could do. We gonna have to make our own cereal in order to get on the box? Yeah, I'm sure that could be arranged. Yeah. Yeah, like back in 2008, we made our own freaking shoe just so we could collab on a shoe. Shout out to Tweak. Okay. What's your number nine? 
Um, see, I, see, I'm just tapping into the anger. Like, yes, I'm playing it up. I find it interesting. But, it, but I'm. But, I find your angle interesting. But no, it's actual I wasn't ex- jealousy. I wasn't actual expecting jealousy. anger. What? Well, I'm just wondering if you're going in more of an inspirational direction, like you're not really tapping into the hurt of a of well, jealous. Take this, number nine, Jason Momoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. I mean, I should have put him higher, maybe. Yeah, um, why is he number nine? Uh, well, just because there's a lot of people that I'm jealous of. Uh, and because the thing that I am jealous of Jason Momoa about is very superficial. It's the way he looks. <laughs> Period. Like I now, first of all, he's lived an exciting life. Uh, he gets to do. He's got a cool job being an actor. He's he, he's always doing stuff that seems like he's living an adventurous and fun life. He's into cool stuff. So I guess I'm jealous of that. But the thing that I think about when I think about him is the fact that, um, even you know when I roast myself like in our TikTok where we where we went into the boardroom and found the other Rhett and Link who work here with us. Yeah. And I called myself a bargain bin Jason Momoa. Yeah. Um, it's and, and then even when, you know, I started growing out my hair, um, and I, you know, Jesse obviously had a crush on Jason Momoa and she's been vocal about that and that's fine. I mean, that's, I, of course, right? I'm not surprised. But then when you start making a decision, my decision to grow out my hair wasn't to look more like Jason Momoa, it was for all the reasons that I've explained, but then once you realize that that's what's happening in effect, then you start realizing how there's just things about Jason Momoa that you will never actually achieve physically. I mean, obviously he has a jaw, a lower jaw, which is helpful. I don't have one of those necessarily. I mean, I could probably stick my head into a smaller hole to get something out than he can. <laughs> okay. If like if it, yeah. if, it, if it comes to that. The old head if, through the whole retrieval. If somebody's got to force advantage. their head into a small culvert to like extract a baby with their mouth or something like that, then yeah. they're probably going to call on me instead of Momoa. No, I think they would just use their hand. <laughs> no, and everybody's hands are not functioning in this particular universe. But then when um we were talking to Kimmy, our you know who styles us for our, our our public appearances on like Fallon and such. Yeah, and then I find myself thinking, like you know I'm kind I guess I'm sort of kind of doing like more of a Momoa thing, and then she brings back. Yeah, you gotta you have to say that out loud. And then she and then she brings back her interpretation of well, this is kind of a this is like so what I wore on Fallon is the most Momoa that I have been in public, right? Um, yeah. and. You just start realizing that you're on this, just like Mr. Bryant used to say, I've never seen an asymptote touch its. I've never seen a, I've never seen a function touch its asymptote. I've never seen a function touch its asymptote. That's our physics teacher in and, and math teacher. high school. Uh, and so I feel like I am on a an asymptotic function uh, trying to achieve Jason Momoa-ishness, but never being capable of it. So it's a, you know, it's a little bit well, of you a- you imply that you get really close though. I, yeah, I, I mean- But it might be when you're both 80. That's true, yeah. And you know, okay, so I, I've now I've heard from a second person, right? Okay. A second person. So uh, some of our close friends, uh, their daughter is an actor, uh, who is going to be in a movie? Was in a movie with him that I don't know when it's coming out, but like they got to know him fairly well, right? Yeah. Um, and so he has been shown my photo shoot that you did for me of me dressed up like him, and then also <laughs> my Halloween costume of me dressed up like him. <laughs> yeah. And so to the point now. Now I've never met Jason. We were going to be on Fallon at the same time, but it didn't end up working out. Um. But I've been told that the last time that our friend was was with him on set, uh-huh. and somebody he was talking to somebody else, he turned to her and said, "Hey, um, show him your friend that dresses up like me." <laughs> <laughs> oh yes! And so, oh. and then I was at a party the other that night. Dresses up like yeah, me. that's that that that's who I am to him. <laughs> your friend who dresses up like me. You're becoming that to me too. Yeah, yeah, and so. Uh, a friend who dresses. I was up at like a Jason party the other night. I was at a, a birthday party the other night uh, that you were also invited to, but you couldn't go because you were out of town. And I was talking to my friend at this party, 
And he has another connection to Momoa and said, and was he's like good friends with a guy that was directing or working with Jason. And so he saw what I had done on Instagram and he, and he sends it to his friend and he's like, hey, send this to Jason, this oh, is no. my friend. And then the guy was like, he's already seen it. <laughs> <laughs> he's already seen it? Yeah, basically. Because he had told the director, there's, look at this guy who dresses up like me. I, I don't. He's going around ch telling my people. My impression is that he's going around telling people that there's a guy that dresses up like him, <laughs> and I'm that guy. So he should be jealous of me. That's like Jim Morrison <laughs> in hiding, saying, "Look at this band that covers all of our songs." You know, it's like it's just a weird thing. It's just a weird thing. Uh, shall we move on? Yeah, I, sure. I don't, you know, I don't need to rub your nose in it. You're already. Uh, I've done that. You've myself. already done that. Um. My number eight is, uh, it's kind of a toss up. I'm gonna put these two together, okay? Because I was gonna put oh. uh, a street sweeper and I'm talking about the occupation. Okay. Like, it's like, the, you see these Zamboni machines that go down uh, residential streets uh, and, yeah. and city streets. Yeah. It's called street sweeper. I'm sweepers. familiar with the street sweeper. It's like an awesome machine. Now, growing up, we didn't know about this. Didn't know about it. So maybe if you live out in the country, you don't know about it. I, I was walking Jasper this morning and we had an encounter with one of them. And I was like, this is going on my list. Man, I would. I wish, I'm jealous of that pilot of that thing. I wish I was piloting a street Zamboni right now. What was and the then look I on his face? I didn't see his or her face at all because the street sweeper was going the other direction. But like, there's so much power under, like you're sitting on so much power and you're cleaning things and there's a route and you're alone. You can listen to whatever you want. And then I realized the reason why I'm jealous of this person is really because I'm jealous of people with big, nice yards. I'm, I wanna, I, I just remember back from my summer job days of mowing grass, like, I miss mowing grass. I'm jealous of people who get to mow their grass. One day I wanna go back to mowing grass and I wanna like get the nicest lawnmower on a, that on it that exists. Like there's some of these lawnmowers that like, like those big industrial ones that like you can, you can turn on a dime. Man, I'm so jealous of those people. I, I don't wanna hurt, I don't wanna hurt this dream, but I'm just telling you that grass is really falling out of fashion. You know, it's just, it, it's, yeah. It's not, not here. I wouldn't do it here. Yeah, in the drought-stricken region. Yeah, so you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to move. You got to move to the south. No, I'm just gonna buy a big yard, or maybe just rent someone's yard, fly there, where there's like you buy a field in North Carolina and just go down there and, and, just mow, go there and it. mow it. I don't want it to be a field though. I like to have obstacles and I like to have things to look at. We can install obstacles. It's like tapping into my childhood. Really, what we're talking about. Maybe it's a, I, I would, I'm using this term loosely, it's a garden, not with other plants that need to be maintained, because you don't sound like you're into that, but maybe no. there's sculptures. There's things that no, you have to maneuver I wanna, around. I wanna ride a big thing. No, no, no. You're on a big thing, oh, mowing yeah, yeah. grass, but you said you wanted obstacles. I'm saying we could put fountains, sculptures, and so we basically, we've created a garden, like a sculpture garden, or maybe, you know what? I think we just created a graveyard. I think I yeah I could do that. We just reverse engineered a graveyard. You need to find a graveyard in North Carolina that Dodging maybe headstones. once a year you can cut. I'm sure that can be arranged. Cause I yeah yeah yeah. So but you got there from street sweeper. Cause it's the same thing. I'm jealous of both of those occupations. And uh, when I'm driving down the interstate and I see there's like mower ahead signs, I'm like oh yeah here we go. Contain yourself, boy. And then I look over there and they're like, it's a tractor that's mowing and then there's this thing that comes down on the, the side. The extension arm. The extension arm, it's like, man, I would just love to be able to mow down a, a embankment with that extension arm. Well, you know, some things are easier to organize than others and I think mowing is one of the easier things to organize. Until then, I'll just be jealous. Um, okay, I'm gonna, my, my number eight is Mauro Morandi. I'm probably not saying that right. Let me What's tell you that? about. Uh, well, they're all gonna be people, just so you know. Okay, who uh, is that? Mauro Murandi. So I'm gonna read about Mauro. This is an inventor? No. Okay. An architect? Uh, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is what he looks like. An dude. old 
dude with a white beard and the biggest bags under his eyes. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm reading from a CNN article uh, by Sylvia Marchetti. Okay. From 2021. For nearly 33 years, he lived a hermit life on a beautiful island in the Mediterranean where he was the sole inhabitant. So the thing <laughs> I am jealous about is the fact that he got to live alone for an extended period of time. Okay, I've always had this yeah. idea of like I would enjoy a hermit lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's obviously not practical at this point. I have established a family that I'm not going to abandon. Um, Do you know what the grass is like on the island? I, I don't know. Um, so, this, this is, I wanna tell you the rest of the story because it's kind of fascinating. Mauro Morandi, known as Italy's Robinson Caruso, after developing <laughs> a loyal online following, was caretaker of the Sardinian island of Budeli, embracing silent solitude and the peacefulness of nature while living in an old beach stone hut. There was no social buzz, no fancy food, no friends, his only companions were birds and cats. I might change that to dogs, but he slept Birds on birds and dogs. He slept on a cot and had few clothes. Forsaking all comforts, he preached a monastic existence of self-reflection and meditation on Bedelli's pink beach, dotted with coral dust. Mm. So he, you can read more about his existence for thirty-something years on this island, and also how he, how he ended up. He ended up there. Like apparently, there was like uh, I think he crashed there originally, and then he just ended up staying there. But then the people who, the marine park authorities, who basically, they wanted to evict him to turn the aisle into an environmental observatory. So after years of them trying to get him to leave, he finally left. Uh, after posting a pithy message of resignation, my balls are broken, <laughs> that's what oh, he said. Poor guy. Which is slang for I'm fed up. So he, he was 82 when he moved off of the island. Oh, poor guy. He's been there 30 years? Yeah, but it says, moving home and starting a new life can be tough for anyone, even more so for an 82-year-old who has spent three decades living a solitary existence on a paradise island. Is it possible to move on and readjust? I am not jealous of this guy at this point. Says Morandi, the answer is an emphatic yes. Oh. Once, once, once I get to the end, you'll see why I'm jealous. It's never really over, Morandi tells CNN. I'm the living proof that a second new life is possible. You can always start over all all over again, even if you're over 80, because there are other things you can experience. A totally different world. Proving his point, Mirandi has apparently been thriving since moving back to civilization on the inhabited island of La Maddalena, not too far from Bedelli. La Maddalena. I'm happy <laughs> and I have discovered the pleasure of living the good life and enjoying everyday comforts. Using his pension from his former life as a teacher, he's bought himself an apartment with all the luxuries he lacked before. He's been sharpening his skills as a communicator. After years of solitude, he's now eager to talk to people, exchange views, and post photos and comments on social networks to interact with the world. He's also been writing his memoir. So he is using social media in a healthy way? That's yes. not possible. So, okay, the thing I love about this guy is he had the hermit lifestyle uh, for 30 years, yeah. right? Balls got broken. Balls got broken and he's moved back to civilization and he's like, Enjoying, he goes on to talk about like what enjoying a bed and yeah. enjoying a kitchen and in, enjoying people. And so, like, he's going into his old age, like living a second life. So, I'm jealous of this guy for two reasons the hermit thing, but also the fact that most people, when they get into their 80s, they're not beginning something new, right? They kind of, mm -hmm. you feel like you're in the sunset of your life, but he's like starting something new and experiencing a whole new perspective on life and I'm like, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to arrange uh, a long-term hermit situation and I also think that it's something that appeals to me but I would get very bored very quickly so it's probably not gonna happen. The best I'm gonna be able to do is, hey, a week long solo trip. Um, but uh, I think this guy's living his, his best life and I, I'm jealous of him. I'm gonna put my number eight is related to this one, so I'm moving this around. I'm jealous, every time I see him and interact with him, of park rangers, if, and there's like a similar thing, like I don't wanna be a hermit, I don't wanna be alone, but like, if you go to like a beautiful park, like think about going to Yosemite and you're interacting with these park rangers, now you can get on like a, a crappy park, and you gotta, I think you gotta work your way up to the nice ones, like, 
Zion or something. Yeah, I know some folks who got um, some mythical beasts who got placed at uh, the Salton Sea. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's something to it. I, yeah. I so I found myself being jealous of those people, but then I think and it's like there's probably a big downside. It's like you just can't go wherever you want to go. You got duties. You're a caretaker of the forest. You're like an ant, You're like a human ant. I like that idea. I'm jealous that like I don't have a so much of a connection with nature that like there's a certain swath of nature that I've spent so much time in that I'm attuned to every little change associated with it. So I'm jealous of that connection that someone like a park ranger has with a swath of nature. Mm. And maybe this is akin to the lawn mowing thing too. I know all oh, the grass is thicker you this can't, time you of year. You can't mow in a national park. <laughs> there are certain places where you, I, I've seen weed eaters in a national park. But not the native grasses. You can't be cutting the native you don't grasses. Be cut, yeah, you're right, you're right. But then I'm like, maybe I'm just jealous of one of those hikers that does the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. Like having the time to do that. So that's, I, I'm trying to settle on where my jealousy really lies. And I don't think it's, I think it's less of an occupation and more of a connection with nature. Well, I think that the hiking the Appalachian Trail, I, I mean, just, I still feel like we should do it. Just, just, I mean, <laughs> it takes a long time. No, I'm not necessarily just, the whole thing. It's not, I mean, you're talking about isolation. It's like, that could be an insult to, uh, you know, the, the loved ones you live with. Oh, they understand. It's like, it's like, oh, you okay? So you're so jealous that you can't you can't get away from me, can't get away from us. But I but there is something. I was going to say sexy, but there's nothing sexy about it. There's something intriguing about it, adventurous. I mean, I've always had this this uh, this secret dream to do something like okay, yeah. I am gonna hike the Appalachian Trail this this year, or the sailboat of it all. It's something that yeah, you, you but love it's just the idea. it's not it's none of that is practical at this point. Not just because of relationships, relationships, but just position in life. It's like okay, we can't yeah. do that if we're gonna do something like that. We have to be like, well, we're gonna make it look like we hike the Appalachian Trail, and we're gonna shoot it in a week, and it's gonna be a YouTube video. <laughs> you know, it's like so. But we should we should do. Um, I mean. I think we should set a date in a the second. in the future, and it should be like by this time you have to have made plans to do something like that, whether we do it together or because I just think that before you get too old, where you can't do something adventurous, like a lot of people do. The shorter they they hike that trail in the uh, is it the one that goes from it's in Spain and it like goes I don't know to a bunch of like. It's, Oh, I know what you're talking Churches about. Churches or something? It's like a it's a famous quest that people go yeah. on. I mean, it does remind me that we do need to get like solo trips on the on yeah. the books again. That's got to happen I again. I keep trying to find that time. Uh my number 7 is not uh unrelated to what we're talking about because it's Jared Diamond. So the Jared Diamond is he wrote one of my favorite books, Guns, Germs and Steel, right? So he's basically He's also old, you know, he's 84. I'm just, just jealous of all, I'm not jealous of, I don't wanna be 84 right now, uh, but I'm just jealous of how he got from where he's at now, you know, from where he was to how he got to his to 84 and what he's done in between. So this guy has written like The Third Chimpanzee, Guns, Germs, and Steel, Collapse, The World Until, Ye Until Yesterday, these um, sort of, uh, they're historical slash scientific explorations of really interesting things, but so he's, I mean, obviously he's like a professor at the same time, but he's just a guy who has traveled the world and been on places like Easter Island or New Guinea. And, you know, he's a bird watcher, which that's not something that I necessarily aspire to, but like his bird watching and his his uh, interest in, uh, is it ornithology? Is that what yeah. you call it? Took him to like he would he would take trips to New Guinea to like discover and observe birds. So just somebody who's sort of like as close to a modern day Indiana Jones is like kind of what like I'm trying to find, right? Writer, yeah. So it's 
like traveling in order to then r like find something out that then you can write about that a lot of people will read and be like, man, this, this guy really put it all together. The, the, the travel and the adventure mixed with the knowledge that you're getting and then the, synth the synthesi synthesizing of the knowledge into like a work. Like all those things are super intriguing to me. And so, I'm, yeah. you know, and so, and you know, and it's, I could, at this point in my life, I can be like, well, I can also travel. I can also watch birds, but I'm not, I'm not trained. You know, it's like I know I'm. What, if I'm going to write a book, it's it's not going to be. It's going to be like the book of mythicality. No, I it's think not, it's not well, going to be. I actually think you wouldn't write drums, guns, and steel. I think it would be fiction, but it would still be travel related. And you even you need to justify a lot of research. I think that could be like your 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 swan song. Well, and I think that there's there's something to you know. You look at what he's done a bunch of stuff and he's obviously stayed really busy, but then it'd be like this particular quest resulted in this particular book. And it's like how many years of thinking about, because Claps is really, really cool, the 2005 book that uses the story of Easter Island and how Easter Island basically decimated their own population and their natural resources because of an ideology that they were following and with putting the statues up. Huh. And he uses that as an analogy to talk about what we're doing as a culture with our commitment to, you know, consumerism and you know, the and what the results of the impact on the environment will be. And so we're on a larger scale we're doing what they did, but it's like how much how, how much I'm not, I want I want to go to Easter Island, but I don't want to go he doesn't go to Easter Island with like a cool backpack he got off of Instagram so he can take pictures that he puts on Instagram. And that's the end of it, which is what I would probably do, right? Yeah. Like I took my film camera to Easter Island. I got some cool ass film pictures of these statues. Here's my carousel on Instagram. Isn't this cool? Oh man, you got an eye for photography and that's the end of it, right? Yeah. It's like, no, no. This guy goes there and he's like coming to conclusions about things and like making statements about things and actually impacting the way that we're moving forward as a civilization. He's not just trying to get likes on Instagram. You know what I mean? I don't, but I know I, that you do. I'm, yeah, I I, am I, jealous of I'm, Jared I, He's not going on my list, but I, I, I get that. I think that's totally you. Now this is one that I think you're, we've talked about, that if it's not on your list, you're gonna put it on there because okay. we've had this discussion about being jealous of this duo. The Coen Brothers. Okay. We talk specifically about, first of all, they're filmmakers. They have built their brand, their identity on their amazing films that they just say, you know what? It, and then we say things like, man, they just, they conceptualize this film and then they just, they get in a room and they like beat it out and then they're like, there's a couch in there and they just, they'll leave it. Some days they'll just like sleep on the couch and then wake up and keep writing and storyboarding, meticulously planning everything, that everybody gives them full trust and creative freedom to yeah. just do their thing, and then every few years or so, another one comes out. Yeah. And so that creative experience, especially in the world of film, that was always this aspiration of ours that we have not achieved, is something that manifests as jealousy when you hear about their process. Yeah, and I have somebody on my list later who uh, for the same exact reasons. Okay. Um, but, but I yeah, think yeah. the the film part of it, like I'm jealous of that too. It's like, oh, um, you know, conceptualizing oh, yeah, that's a what world I'm saying. meticulously. Like, yeah, I have another filmmaker for, okay. the, for the same reason. Yeah, I, I think that there is, um, you know, it's funny, we had that conversation with Matthew McConaughey on this show, I remember that. And yeah. we kinda went into getting his advice, which he likes to give advice, that's kinda what Green Lights is all about. Um, and then we were basically talking about our desire to create, like we feel like we're being held back and then he said something like, you don't need to ask for permission and it, and it's like, yeah, I, I understand that. Um, 
But unfortunately, we still kind of are in a place where there is a certain level of permission that we have to receive, right? You know, you, you, you think about what, when you wanna create things on a certain level, sure, we can do whatever we want to on the internet within reason if, it, if we can get, if we can mobilize our team to do it. Yeah. Uh, but it has to be very economical in order for us to be able to pull it off both in time and in money. And so I think the thing that you're tapping into is somebody's like, hey, here's plenty of money to do something where we're not gonna come back necessarily and say you can't do that because of money. You know, I'm not saying they get to do whatever they want to. They're not spending like $500 million on their movies or whatever. They're still making movies that are reasonable. But like, no one is coming along, even what we, what we, did, we did with Inside Eats, right? Proud of the show that we created, but we're creating it for another audience in a lot of ways. We're creating it for, it's gotta work on Food Network, right? Whereas they're just like, I'm making a movie that's just gonna work for anyone who wants to see the movie that we're making. And, we, and no, there's no, we're not getting permission from any for anybody creatively. Yeah, and you think about the, the buy-in they get, they get, any talent they want, like, yeah. to, is like clamoring to work with them, it's an automatic yes. Give me your next one. Number six, John Mayer. Oh. I want. I wanted to put a musician on the list. Okay, and I and I, I'm sure I could have. You know, I don't. It, he's not like the end all be all. I'm jealous of him in particular more so than anybody else. But I think that there is a um, like I didn't put Harry Styles on here, right? Because I'm actually not jealous. I, the thing about a guy like Harry Styles is somebody who is defining culture. Like if he wears something, it's cool. It doesn't matter what he does. It's cool. It's defining culture. And John Mayer's not like that because he's our age and he's not making pop music anymore. But the way that he's just kind of doing what he wants to do musically. Yeah. And yeah. also the fact that his sole focus, this is another thing about each person on this list. For me, one of the things I'm jealous of is people who have a focus. Mm -hmm. We don't have a focus. We do, we have like 12 jobs, right? Uh, but everybody on this list, they do this one thing really, really, really well. That's why John Mayer can play the guitar like a complete badass because John Mayer has been playing the guitar since he was a teenager in his bedroom for hours and hours and hours on end. And my relationship with the guitar is when I have a song to write or something to figure out, I will play the guitar. Mm -hmm. But then weeks will pass when I don't pick it up, right? because there's too many other things going on. Um, so I think that somebody who has like achieved something really admirable musically, like is operating at a very, very high level musically, but also just making the music that they wanna make. So that's a specific I thing get that, it. I'm not jealous of the fact that John Mayer has dated, you know, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, fill in the blank. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Uh, let's yeah. Let's not. Let's not. I have a policy of not bringing up his dating life in 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 as part of my fandom of John Mayer. Period. Yeah, like you said, he's not. He's singing songs about wishing that he was with his old high school girlfriend. <laughs> you know. Yeah, naming their third baby. Yeah. Right. Uh, I I have a musician on my list for totally different reasons. Okay. Um. Flea. I'm jealous of Flea, the basis for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He he's, I mean, how old is Flea? Give me. I'd say fifty-eight. Uh, dude, give us a Google. Flea. Oh, you're not listening to our show. <laughs> how old is Flea? How old is Flea? The reason why I'm jealous of Flea is because he's he's fifty-nine years old, and he's the dude can move like. I mean, I, second to Mick Jagger. It's like this. I mean, this. Dude, well, Mick Jagger's like tw thirty years older than him. I know, but like to to make that statement about the dude can twenty move years older is is astonishing for Mick Jagger. I guess I'm I will be jealous of Mick Jagger one day, but I'm not now. I'm jealous of Flea because I never learned to play an instrument, but the way that he plays, yes, I can I can I can get by on some instruments for comedic effect, but I never learned to play an instrument. And I chose him because he channels 
so much of himself. Yes, he's he's an excellent, arguably the most famous one of the uh, rock bassists, one of the most famous bassists. Period. I love the bass guitar. I love what it does for music. <laughs> But the way that he channels his entire body into his music and f- just feels it is something that I would, I just, with my connection to music, the way that it's, I just, n- I just wish I could have it flow out of me like you, c- you see him do it. And like, I spared no expense for my Chili Peppers tickets when they come to LA. Well, you know, I I'm think excited. you can potentially. Is, is there any that. DJ that also has a bass? I'd have to learn the bass. I'm not prepared to learn the bass at this point in my life, well, honestly. Well, but yeah, I mean, but I you, could. Got, you got a lot of time left. I, what I'm saying is, but is it's it not could the thing. be cool yeah, I'm, to play the bass as a DJ. Like, I'm you're pursuing doing a DJ the DJ set. thing. I can't pursue the bass thing at the same time, but just the embodiment and to have music flow through you in that way that's like, Second nature, like you're not thinking about what you're playing, you're just thinking about what you wanna exude and you're so good at it, you've mastered it to the point where, oh, but you put the you put the it's like, yeah. that's just, I, I'm jealous of that. I'll never have that feeling. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> I, but I have it in other ways. But what I'm at, saying is and that. And I have experienced flow in a way that's like, I know enough of it to want it to go through a bass. But think about this, if you're DJing and <laughs> it's like all of a sudden, the song comes on and, and, and it's like, oh man, that, that sounds good, but there's no bass line in that song. Yeah. When is the bass gonna drop? And you think that the bass is gonna drop within the song, but then DJ Link, or whatever your DJ name ends up being, pulls out a bass guitar? Yeah. You don't even have that to actually cool. play it. Yeah, because you can, you can do a low, Make it look filter. like you're playing. You could take the bass out of anything that you're playing mm-hmm. and replace it with your own bass line. I'm just giving you ideas, It's man. a great idea for for somebody. Maybe I'll get there. Uh, my number five. It's good to have goals. My number five is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> uh, okay. For a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, but I will say that I think that Jeff Goldblum, in his advanced age, and I'm just saying advanced age compared to us, he's not like about to die, but Mm. being old, but achieving iconic status where you can kinda say anything that you want and people are like, Jeff Goldblum said that. Mm. Or you know, Jeff Jeff, like if we went to a party and somebody said Jeff Goldblum's here, it would, what, what do you think about that? We'd be like, well, who doesn't like Jeff Goldblum? I know. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's not so much what Jeff Goldblum was able to accomplish to become Jeff Goldblum, which would it be, yeah, being a, a famous actor would be super fun. But that's not specifically what I'm jealous of. It's, he can be, oh, look what Jeff Goldblum has on. Look, yeah. at, look at Jeff Goldblum in that commercial that's about apartments. Yeah. But he just made apartments.com cool because he's Jeff Goldblum. All right, I'm, he's on my list now. And yeah, you're exactly right. For me, I'm just jealous of his vibe. What he's done is he's given himself over completely to his eccentricities. And th- there are times, talk about tapping into flow, that I feel like I can unabashedly give myself over to my eccentricities and it feels good but I don't live in that place. I'm jealous that it seems that he lives in that place. But it isn't as simple as that because you know, he Jeff Goldblum, and there's nothing against you, but most people can't give themselves over to their eccentricities. And you just, you are, you aren't. It's and, not a decision, no, no, I think. No. Well, yeah, to that, but most people can't give themselves over to their eccentricities and still be broadly appealing to pretty much everybody. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's a weird dude, but everyone likes his, is a, is drawn to, I don't know anybody who's like, I hate Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's got a magnetism. Like when Jeff Goldblum gets super weird and crazy and does something, it's like, it's always endearing, it's never annoying. It's just like, that's just so hard for, for people to do. I. It's a magic, it's sort of a magic power that most people just don't have. 
I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a version of me in the future that could achieve Jeff Goldblum's status. Like it's not in my DNA makeup to be. I, I think I could do it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm. That's where I'm differing. I, I'm, I'm having a difference of opinion. Well, I don't need. I don't need your opinion because I think that it would appeal to a lot of people. But there's you would not you leaning into your eccentricities would not appeal to as many people as Jeff Goldblum does. Uh, well, I'm already an acquired taste. I'm not for everybody. It, but I've I'm just, said that I, it's just it's yeah. How is he for everybody? There's a phenom. Yeah. It, there's a phenomenon. There's few there. people like that. That this is like you can't hate on Jeff Goldblum. He behaves in a way that you would think would be polarizing, but it's not. It's kinda like Dolly Parton. It's yeah. a bit of Dolly Parton. It is, it's a, there's a similar I mean, thing. Th but in the magnetism and like, yeah, who can hate on Dolly Parton? But it's for totally, <laughs> it's a totally different vibe. I'd love to see the two of them together. Because I also don't get the impression that Jeff Goldblum he's a, he's a is, pianist. Like, is working as hard, hard as Dolly Parton. Nah, he Do you know what I'm saying? Like Dolly Parton is, Working hard, isn't that, wasn't that like nine to five? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean. At least nine to five, all a, the time. What a way to make a living. I mean, nine to five to me sounds kinda like banker's hours, but. Uh, Dolly's working way more than clock, nine to five. She, that's, yeah. But I don't think Goldblum is. Like what's Goldblum doing right now? He's probably relaxing. Something that I would like to be <laughs> with him for, yeah, right. whatever it is, I'm game. Uh, You know what? You know, a person I'm jealous of, it's a group of people. Um, when I'm mountain biking, you know, I got this one route I do, it takes me two hours. I'm going up, 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 only up for an hour and 20 minutes. And then it, you know, like 30 minutes back down, the same, give or take the same route. Um, but then, you get overtaken by a couple of people and then you find yourself looking over your shoulder because you, you don't want to be that guy who's like you're listening to something and then there's somebody behind you forever and they're like trying to get by you and like judging how slow you're going. So you get a little, I get a little self-conscious. You learn when you turn a, a corner to like give a little look just to make sure there's not somebody back there. But then there's sometimes when it's like people get so, they're, they're in so much better shape that they just like they'll just find a way around even before I realize that they're there because they're coming up on me so fast, mm -hmm. and it's it's a bit it's a bit soul crushing, uh, and it's happening more and more. But the thing that I'm noticing is that, and I've learned to look and immediately identify these people. It's like this guy's got ten years on me. What the hell? Yeah, he's on an e bike. E bikes are are really taking over. E mountain bikes. So they're, they're wow, so battery you driven the assistance to get up the hill. Yes. And you know, a lot of people judge them for it. Um I you know, I've learned to stop judging myself because I know where to look on the bike because they can't it's it's it, the they're frame small. the frame has a bigger part down there that's like okay, that's where the motor is. This guy's just trucking. I mean, they go up so fast. It it looks fun going up. Like I'm jealous of these people having fun for that hour and a half that I'm just killing myself so that I can experience the reward of getting up there and the fun of coming down. But they're having the fun going up and the fun coming down and they don't need a helicopter from your friend planning your perfect day. So you're jealous of them because they- I'm jealous because I just can't allow myself to go there. But I have decided I'm not gonna judge or hate on them anymore because it's giving them access, I mean, they wouldn't have the ability, I don't think. You still have to do some work. No, not really. You, yes, you have to pedal a little bit, but let me tell you, they, they're not even breaking a sweat, man. You know, it's, it's funny. Not, it's it, you pedal, but no, not really. This explains why I saw, when Shepard and I were like hiking up a mountain recently on a fire road. Oh gosh. And we saw. Trucking. Uh, well, he was stopped. He was stopped in like drinking water, but he was old. And yeah. I was like, how the hell is this guy getting up this mountain? E -bike. He must have had an e-bike. Yeah, and um, there will come a day whoop, 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 when I will get one of those. But like, I just can't allow myself to do it now because it's my, you know, that's the, that's what's keeping me in shape is not allowing myself yeah, 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 to yeah. get one of those. Well, and you know what, you could get, But I'm jealous that they're experiencing that, but. They also probably, you know, you don't have to use it the whole time if you have I, like a standard. Yes, but that, there's no way. 
Like you're sitting there like trudging in granny gear, knowing that you could just zip right on up the mountain. No, it would never happen. It's yeah. funny that we're jealous of old people. Like everybody on the list is old people. Yeah. Older than us. Give me another one. Um, She is older. Marina O'Laughlin, no relation. Uh. You, before this exercise, you did not know these people. Yeah, well. Like you use this as an occasion to like come up with people. Well, let me say why. She's a food critic. Okay. And so, and she's number four on my list if it gives you any idea of how important this is to me. Someone that you just Googled on the internet, but food critic is really what you're going for. And the reason okay. that I did not know about her, well, first of all, it's not like I'm up on the world of food critics, but also, while she is a very accomplished food critic, she's known for her anonymity. So she's not like, when I started looking, I was like, I wanna find a food critic on my list because I've always loved the idea of just being someone who gets paid to eat, which is, again, yes, I, I kinda do that already. Yeah, you do that already. But it's not the same. I'm not eating at a fine dining establishment and then giving you my refined opinion on it. Well, don't let the Mythical Kitchen hear that. And also, um, she has not positioned herself as a personality because she kind of talks about the the fact that, you know, these people who, if you look up food critics, most of them like, oh, and they have this TV show and, mm -hmm. and they have this show that they're on or they're a judge on this thing. She's kind of avoided that because she wants to maintain her, even though you can you can find out what she looks like and people do know who she is. Uh, but she's got anonymity when it comes to the restaurants, but she has anonymity when it comes to the public, which as a restaurant critic, you probably eat by yourself quite a bit. I've always been very resistant about eating in a restaurant by myself or going to a movie by myself because. Movie's easier. I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant alone. But like, you know, my wife went on a solo trip uh, a couple of years ago and she just went to restaurants by herself, you know? And, and but I, I'm i self-conscious of it because I'm like, well, I'm, it's fine if, you, you, the way, if, if like I just tell the waiter I'm here alone, but then there's this part of me that's like, yeah, but if you know who I am, then it's like, oh, right, just eats by himself because he can't. He doesn't have any friends. So you're jealous <laughs> of being able to eat alone without being judged for it. Well, that's one aspect of it. But also, if you just look at the articles that she writes, I think she's with the Times now in in in, in England. Um, but she doesn't just. She'll go to like I'm reviewing this hotel that has a restaurant. I'm reviewing the hotel and the restaurant, and this is like posh hotel somewhere in Wales and she's like writing about it. Um, so she gets to travel, which travel to, travel to nice places, to stay in nice places, to eat nice food is a very appealing thing that I like to enter, I like to, I like to do those things. But you like to, to redeem get the travel by writing. I, I, th I think you're onto something here. You wanna travel with a purpose of writing. Second time he's come up. I, I think and you want to eat. There's, there's definitely something to. For me, when I experience something, I'm compelled to write about it because it helps me to understand it better for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like when you you have this experience, you're like, I'm gonna put this in my journal, not so that somebody can necessarily read it, but it helps me understand what happened to me and understand and remember. Like I, I you know, I had these. I have this list on my in my Evernote, which is like things I like, <laughs> and it's and I haven't added to it for a long time. But it's just like I want to remember that I, this restaurant was good, or I want to remember that this this place was a really fun place to go. There's something about cataloging that that is important, but also it's just the lifestyle. You know what you should do? You should commit yourself to being a Yelp writer. It that's a perfect. Journal, it can be anonymous where you can have, you. I'm sure you can look at your own account and have a record of everywhere you've eaten and just a little something that you've said about it. Don't write, don't do it for other people. I mean, they'll benefit from it, but maybe you'll start to get noticed because of your pros. <laughs> I don't know. Anonymously. Man. Come on, man, think about it. Don't poo poo it. Don't make the stink face. I this just is think, a good idea. I think that I want to to write in a more um, 
You want the cr- you want the you want the cred. No, no, that's not what I mean. No, yeah, I do want cred, but that's not why. That's not what what I'm jealous about. But you can still get it. I mean, people people get cred from writing Amazon reviews. It's a different style. It's a different style, though. You could be the first. It's not experiential. Make it experiential. It's like we had, we had the Hawaiian shrimp combo. No, there are there are more. Uh, Everyone at my table ordered. So you know, I don't. There's uh, a different. No, there are people who write reviews in a different way. You could do it your way. You think there's somebody who and you a, have a record of everywhere that you've eaten, and it gives you. It's like, well, I got to eat somewhere else because I got to. You think there's somebody who it. wrote a Yelp? They're counting on me. Wrote Yelp reviews and then transitioned into full time food critic. Is that what you want? No, I'm just saying that I just don't think that bridge gets there. Is that what you want? No, but I, if I'm gonna write the reviews, I want it to be, I wanna be able to approach it as a food critic, not as just a yelper. It just feels like a distinctly different well, exercise. That's, that's your only path. I mean, you need a portfolio. I think I'm just gonna keep eating at good restaurants and maybe start eating at them alone. Um, I only have what, two more? I, th- this one right here, again, it's another older person. Two more, I'm about, to, I just gave you my number four, so I have three more. Oh, maybe I'm cutting ones. Um, this guy's 49 years old. But he, ever since, like for, for decades, he has been a prolific uh, music producer. And I, I, this, is, this one's much more squarely inspirational than it is jealous. I get. I, I actually don't know exactly what I'm jealous of Pharrell about, uh. but I think I can start to put my finger on it. Um, the dude has, you know, for for decades has been creating music, producing music, showing up in all types of places. Uh, of course, with the Neptunes back in the day, but then, I mean, he he's at at his age. He's still producing for the top artist on the planet, like uh, the new Kendrick album. He he produced uh, Mr. Morale. That's the only song he produced on there. But to be on that album, which is like, you know, it's like a a, a treasure, a time capsule. It's like this this artistic expression is something that will always be referred to, not just in hip hop. Whether whether you go back and listen to it all the time or not, that's it's just you can't deny it. The fact that like he's working with Kendrick, he's working with he's and he's like he's singing the hook on uh uh the Pusha T album, uh which I really like. So it's like and uh he actually sang the hook on All Right, the Kendrick song from uh to Pimp a Butterfly. So like he's 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 been around he's in the mix and he's like he's getting older. First of all, he he doesn't he doesn't look forty nine. He, he look like a, I mean he looks so young, but he's staying young. Like I, I again I think this is more of an inspiration. But the thing that I'm jealous of is that like he's in this he's in the world with these musicians that are at the and artists that are at the top of their game. He's like rubbing shoulders with them. He's creating with them. So he's not just a fly on the wall, but he's like in the mix. And that's just like, it's a world that's so fascinating to me. And I just, I love the idea of it. So I'm jealous that like this guy gets to walk into a room and you know, if Prince were alive, he'd go, he'd go up and talk to him, you know? Yeah, uh, he was in that, uh, that Kanye documentary. Right. Like in the early days of Kanye, like. Yeah. And there's like that scene where he like recognizes he recognized Kanye's it. talent, and he's and it was like he just, there were no one was expecting it at the time, right? And he looked exactly the same as he does now. Yeah, it's just so weird. Yeah, he'd uh, be a cool guy. I have me. a music producer in my top three, but I, he's All not right. my number three, so I'm gonna give you my number three. Well, just do them out of order. Uh, okay. Well, I'll give you my number two. Then my number two is Rick Rubin. Oh um, yeah. Um, same thing. See, I get. I got you to watch that Paul McCartney thing because you told me. Yeah. The three, two, one. And, I, and also, even though he doesn't actually cameo in it in the second season of Dave, um, there's like the Rick Rubin episode. I don't remember that. Wasn't that Dave? I think I fell off. I didn't finish Dave season two for some reason. 
Really? I got to finish that. Um, I think that's the show that I saw it on. So what about what about him makes you jealous? Uh, well, he has simultaneously um, achieved what you're talking about Pharrell being able to achieve in terms of being very much in the mix of, it's like on the cutting edge of culture, right? Yeah. For a very long time. But at the same time, his personal journey of spirituality and into meditation and also just physically what he looks like, <laughs> he completely departed from the path of like, be, I am trying to be cool in, in yeah. this way and I dress cool and I, it's like Rick Rubin wears like a t-shirt and shorts and flip flops everywhere he goes and obviously does not do anything to his hair or beard except just let it grow. Yeah. And he's a musical guru. Yeah, and so yeah, he's well and I I think he's somewhat of a spiritual guru, right? Because he is he's obviously got a high level of equanimity in his life through his practice of of meditation. Um which my understanding is that it's it's very advanced and developed. So he's just a very calm and peaceful guy who seems to be he's gotten to a place where the things that bring him pleasure and fulfillment and joy he's like he's he's parsed out his life in his older age to know that like this is what I want to be doing and I'm going to focus exclusively on these things that bring me joy and everything else is going to just fall to the wayside including like what I look like <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying now obviously the net effect is he looks like a badass because he because he looks like he doesn't care what he looks like. So it you know. So he's got the and he's got this compound in Malibu, and then he's got another place in Hawaii. And artists just show up for him to work his magic. Yeah, it's like he he's like I've set up my life, and now these people are going to come to me. You know. Yeah. So his proximity to these artists, sort of culture defining things that keeps you kind of young and keeps you in the mix. But yet being totally separate from it at the same time. That's, he's the only person that I know, or he's the best example of a person who has achieved that. Being in the world, but not of the world, you know, to use a biblical reference, right? So hmm. he's very much in it. He's completely in it. He, but then he like lives like, what feels like a, he, his outward appearance is like someone who's living a monastic lifestyle. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I just, the idea of being, you know, 20, 30 years from now, I don't know how, he's not, he's not that much older than us, but like achieving that type of equanimity, but still being involved in creating great art, that's, that's, I'm jealous of that. I don't know what equanimity means. I'm trying to infer that. It just means uh, basically a balance, like, so, balance in balance in your life, peace so like, and joy, and life equilibrium. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's basically what you're. You're supposed to say. Well, I don't know what equilibrium means. It's it's what you're it's what you're trying to achieve. It's ultimately what every, whenever everybody says that they're they're going after joy or happiness, silent lucidity. What they're really talking about is equanimity because. You can't be happy all the time. Like that's not a state that you can just be in. You're gonna have happiness. You're gonna have sadness. You're gonna have. You're gonna experience the ga the gamut of human emotions. But like, are you com constantly kind of coming back to the center? Are you balanced? Okay. Do you have equanimity. Yes. Yeah, I do. I do. Thank you. I didn't know what it meant, but I I totally am nailing that. <laughs> um. Okay. I guess I. So I took. I t I'm taking my dogs off my list. I was jealous of my dogs, but I'm taking them off the list to put um, okay. uh, whoever I put on the list because you told me to. Oh yeah. But I guess I gotta keep on my list. I'm jealous of people who don't have to sleep a lot. Mm. But I'm more secure in being able to magically nap anywhere at any time as a superpower. So it kind of balances itself out. I'd love to be able to have both though. Like I'm a super sleeper and a super napper, but I also want to not ever need it. 
I don't think those people really exist though. And maybe they don't. Yeah, I like hearing that. I mean, I don't know. They're fooling themselves. A lot of people. They're depriving are, themselves and they'll die young. A lot of people have brought into question, uh, I think I actually wrecked it at one point, that book about sleep. Uh, it turns out that. You're unwrecking the book now? Well, it's Do just it. been, there's been, a, I don't, I'm not, well, I can't, I don't know if I wrecked it, and so I can't unwreck it. Uh, but if I did wreck it, I can say that there are certain things that the guy says in the book. It isn't like it's all made up and it's not true, but there is some like manipulation of the data in a way to kind of like make his point. But one of the things that he talks about is that those people who say that, oh, I only need four hours of sleep, but like it's actually much more rare than probably they're, not. They're foolish. It's like probably not. Actually, you probably would be healthier if you were getting six to eight hours of sleep. Or seven, by the way, the people who are literally full of shit, then they got a problem too. It's like you're not you're, jealous of them. No, 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 no. I've been on a really good run lately. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. So do you have two left or one left? Two. Okay. So give me your two, and I'll give you my one. Well, how about I give you one, then you do one, then I can get you. I go last. I think we might well, have the same number. Because I only have one left. I think we might know the same number one. I only have one left. Yeah, so I'll do mine, and then you do yours, and then I'll do mine. Exactly. But you said give you me have... your two. I thought you wanted no, me to go I two said, in a row. No, give me your two. I'll give you my one, then you give me your one. <laughs> oh, I thought you said give me your two. Like I did say give no, me your no, two. No. I thought you were like, give me your last two. That's what I heard you hey, say. Give me both of your two so that I can wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I interpreted that as. You said get, you were saying, "Give me your number." Believe two. the best in me, man. Um, I want you to. I want, so my number, I want you to have the grand finale. My number two is Rick Rubin. My number three is Jordan Peele, for the same reason. You are. He's an inspiration. He made that list. Well, I'm because I'm jealous of him. Okay. Um, for all, all kinds of reasons, for the, all the reasons that I talked about him being an inspiration before. The Give Cohen, me a different reason. The though. Cohen brothers thing, in that he has gotten to a place where. Uh, he is exercising this creative control over these film projects and everyone is just like, I can't wait for the new Jordan Peele movie. Nope. You know? Still waiting, uh, getting ready. And also the fact that there's a there's a, a, a bit of a parallel career and that he yeah. was a, you know, I'm not saying I wanna go and make movies by myself, but I'm saying the fact that he it was in this comedic duo that you never expected either of, oh yeah, it makes sense that they might go on to be actors, but to become this master filmmaker, he was sitting on this incredible skill this whole time. So the way that he has basically reshaped any and all expectations about him based on what he's done in the past is something that I'm like almost 100% sure that that's not something that is is gonna occur in my lifetime. Is is As much as I like to achieve things and as much confidence as I have, I understand the extreme unlikeliness of like, oh, I'm gonna fart out some culture defining film that's, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like something that I'm always going to be jealous of is the fact that he was able to pull that off. That's inspirational and jealousy inducing. Um, My number one, I can't remember if you put this on your inspirational list this guy, but I did not. Um, my 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 ranking is kind of arbitrary, but I think this is a good one to end on for me. Okay. Um, I'm jealous of Bo Burnham because uh. we came up together on the internet, you know? And so it's like having this, a very similar starting point to for him to be in this place where, you know, he's, He's not beholden to the internet in the way that we are. And of course, you know, when we saw him at that party and he was like, hadn't talked to him in so many years and he was like, you know, he's he was very nice and he said something to the effect of, you guys have made made it work on the internet. You've made it work for you and like you're you're still doing it. I think he actually said something like, you guys are a cultural institution. <laughs> Just, I mean, because I, I, I remember, I he remember little, those. And now I can He was being super. He's super nice guy. Super complimentary. Um, but, but you there don't was a get, part, But there was a part of me that was like, yeah, but like, man, it's. I mean, it's just a. You, we both know that it's just a dumb internet show where we eat things every. We're not doing inside on Netflix. You know I what I'm saying? I didn't hear. Yeah, I didn't. My insecurity told me that I did not hear him say. 
man, I really, I really respect you guys in terms of your, your comedic, your comedic yeah. sensitive, uh, sensibility and comedic expression. Like you know, we have this thing where we want comedians that we respect to, to like the things that we create and not just the fe- me- be mesmerized by the fact that we were successful on a platform that they didn't have the stomach for is how I felt mm. like, I felt like that was what was in his compliment. It was that like, you know, I didn't wanna keep playing the YouTube game. Kudos to you guys for doing that to, to an extreme. Um, I, you know, I just, his artistic expression in inside is, uh, yeah, it, may, it makes me jealous because I feel like not only do we have a, a very similar starting point, but we have similar capabilities and sensibilities. You know, it's just well, well, similar in that they kind of are geared in the same way, but not to the degree. Just to, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. In other words, we ain't as talented as Bo Burnham. <laughs> you know. So by a long shot, but but we like to do the same types of things. That yeah. He does. Yeah. 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 So it makes it extra salt in the wound, so to speak. I must have just blocked this one out because he's definitely on my list, and and I would say that for all the reasons that you just said. Now you have to knock off your number one. And no, I'll just I get knock to, off the, so I get to finish. I'll knock off uh, the old guy who lived on the island. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's off the island now. Uh, I think one of the things that I'm jealous of with, with Bo Burnham and also my number one, which I'll get to in a second, is the fact that we have not only created, like the decisions that we've made in our career in order to remain relevant and successful and to build a company has involved quite a bit of giving of ourselves, not just our time, but literally giving of ourselves, words that come out of our mouths and go onto the internet. Like there's so much that we're putting out there of ourselves on this podcast, being vulnerable, right? And, and, you know, I, it was almost like when you take inside, Bo Burnham hasn't been saying anything on social media. He doesn't say anything on Twitter. He doesn't, he's not constantly, he doesn't have a podcast. He's not constantly talking about himself and what he thinks, right? But then he bottles all that up and puts it into this hour long special that is like, this is what I've been thinking. These are my thoughts, not given to you in this steady stream where you can't escape me by going on the internet, but like if you wanna tune into this fire hydrant of expression and creativity and vulnerability, it's in this special that I've been working on for this length of time, and now I'm working on this other thing, and you know what, you'll be around for, and I don't have to stay in your on your radar with every little piece of content that I put out. I'm jealous of that. I'm jealous that somebody can be so prolific yet not have some so much volume in their output. Before you give your number one, uh, do you think that this has been a a uh, a positive experience for us to have this discussion? Like I was more worked up at the beginning. Your your brows a little crinkled at this point. Do you feel like this we're getting things out there and that it's cathartic, or that it's fomenting something? Um, I think those are the same. So I, I think that if you have a if you have a frustration, um, by taking it out, looking at it, and expressing, it, I mean, this is what I do in therapy, right? I'm assuming this is what you do in therapy as well. If there's something that is on your mind in this way, I do, I think that it is only good to vocalize it and actually examine it. So ultimately, yes, very positive but it may not be like, oh, this is gonna put me in a good mood right now, but that's not how I'm gonna judge whether or not there's a net positive. You know, you, you know me, I get very creatively frustrated, right? Because of, I'm extremely grateful for all the, uh, the success and the things that work, but I'm also frustrated that we can't just be like, let's just create this aspirational thing and it just, ha- and get in it, be, and to be financed in the way that we wanted to be financed and just like, here's this thing that we thought of and we spent all this time on. Um, But for me, that desire is not gonna go away 
when I th- when I think about this list of people, it isn't like, oh man, I have regret about choices we've made. I just think I'm still very young. I have a lot of life left, and the way that I'm going to position um, myself in the future is to get in the way of more of these things that I admire in these people. Right? You want to actually engineer your life in a way where you move towards the things that are inspiring. So it may be frustrating, but I think that that frustration is just us being honest about, you know, um, I mean, I get tired of seeing myself on the internet to be perfectly purpose, perfectly frank about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, I, I kind of wish I didn't have to constantly be in, a, in multiple streams of content in order for this to work. Bo Burnham doesn't have to do that. Bo Burnham doesn't have to make an internet video today mm-hmm. to be talked about and to be appreciated. And you may say, well, you guys don't have to either. And I'm not saying that I'm burnt out or anything like that. I'm just saying that I'm jealous of someone who can be like, I'm gonna ball it all up and give it to you in this way. That's not the that's not our business model. Our business model is constant contact contact and content. And I'm and it works and people appreciate it, but it it's I would be dishonest if I said, well, I'm jealous of the people who don't have to do that. Which leads me to my number one, Donald Glover. Um, For all the same reasons, but I think even more so than Bo Burnham because- He does so many different things. He does so many different things. So you can be like, I am going to become a musical artist and I'm not just gonna be a good musical artist, I'm gonna be a great musical artist and I'm not just gonna be a great musical artist, I'm gonna be a culture defining musical artist in a way that every person who's doing only music aspires to. It's such a- it, Yeah, it, but then I'm gonna have this show that's like an artistic expression. Yeah. And th- yeah, and I'm gonna make choices on that show that are for, for Are you him. caught up? I'm not caught up on this. I haven't this, started. This, this, this season. I, 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 I'm waiting for the right time to yeah. hit it. So, and then everything that I just said, he doesn't, like what is, what? oh, let's go watch Donald Glover's Instagram story today. It doesn't exist. Hmm. Because it doesn't need to. I mean, I really, I, it's really a question like, would you do, I mean, first of all, neither one of us are very active on social media. Mm-hmm. To be, now we have, but our presence on social media is very high because the mythical presence is, is very high. But like, if you never had to tweet again, you never had to put your opinion out about anything, you never had to say where you stood on this, you never had to be, here's a picture of me doing this, ever again and you could just be like, here's the thing that I wanted to create and you guys can watch it if you want to. Would you choose that? Well, I feel like the only thing, like I don't really tweet. I don't really, I don't really share much. I've kinda hit a hit a lull. There's, there's like been some times when I'll get back into it, but the majority of the time I'm not into it. So then I just feel guilty that I'm not like, I'm not doing enough from a like a professional standpoint. Right. So to me it's about like like it's an obligation that I'm not fulfilling, so it's more about the feeling of not fulfilling it. Mm. Uh so I don't feel like I have to trade it. Um but in general, like would I trade I don't know, I feel like would I trade my experience right now for any of the people that I'm jealous of. And it's, I mean, if you have to take a kit and caboodle, I wouldn't, you know, it's like. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, I don't know any of these people personally. Yeah. You know, it's like, again, I, you, I do read things in the Mr. Beast profile piece. It's like, okay, it's like, th- things about his existence are things that I am not jealous of. You know, it's like when you get into the specifics, like I don't know Bo Burnham personally. I don't know what his experience is, but like. But even his special came from a place of pain. And, and right. So yeah, so it's I like, completely I don't want agree. That. I don't, I'm and not I'm saying like, I want I'm to in, be. I'm in a pretty nice yeah. spot and I'm, you know, I'm pretty content. Like I'm, I'm actually, I'm jealous of aspects of things, but if you can't pick and choose, then it's like there's no one that like I would trade my life for. It's like. 
I completely agree with that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was telling Jesse about this. I know we're getting along here, but who cares? Um, I was telling her recently, I was like, and I was talking to my therapist about this too. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, you know, I haven't struggled with depression. That hasn't been, I mean, I have, I get depressed at times, you know, like anybody who gets sad or kind of gets down in the dumps or whatever, but I haven't struggled with it like a diagnosable. Well, I, yeah, I wouldn't call those things depression then, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ahead. But I just was talking to him recently and I was like, you know, I keep sort of, there's been multiple times over the past couple of months where I'm just like, I'm happy. You know, and I and I tend to not be a very satisfied person. That's my, I'm very, very driven like, to a maniacal point. And I get a lot of satisfaction at, out of coming up with something and then being, and then like, I'm gonna go after that. Like I'm, I'm geared in that, to that. So I don't, there's not a lot of time where I just stop and think, oh, I'm happy. I've got it really, really good. But there's just been a number of times recently where, and I don't know if it's like with, you know, Lot getting ready to go to, college and it's like our you know the our family dynamic is about to change or whatever um but be, just kind of just recognizing that like man like if there is a universe if there are really multiple worlds and there's other versions of me out there who made <clears throat> other decisions at different points and right. ended up in different places i just can't imagine many of them being better than this you know i rec i recognize that how great everything has worked out so i i completely by by talking about my frustrations creatively and how like I love the fact that Donald Glo I'm jealous of the fact that Donald Glover and Bo Burnham don't have to have a social media presence because their creative presence is so overwhelmingly significant. I'm jealous of that, but I completely agree with you that I'm not saying I want to trade places with anybody on the list. Yeah, I think that we have. I mean, we've we've we're enjoying success. We're at a we're at like a great point in our careers where there's things, there's the relationship with our fans and the relationship, the relationships that we have with each other. And, you know, all of it is kind of like we're in a we're in a good spot, uh, personally and professionally. Um, I think another part of it is, if you focus on the professional part, we do have a lot of freedom and power to say. Okay, we can re if there's anything we want to go after or restructure or any anything that we want to do, it's like we have the ability to do that. Like, well, we don't have the ability to do anything we want to do and have, you know, like to work with any actor we want or to get any film we want made or like to to stretch our legs creatively in any way possible. But we have compared to most people in an artistic field, we have so many more options and so yeah. much more power to to uh, to orchestrate our lives, you know. And I think that that level of autonomy is uh, is a blessing. It's it, it's not a guarantee to find ourselves in this position. Is I, mean, I think I'm very grateful for that. Right. So in in a sense. Like when you say, well, you can you could play a bass while DJing. It's like, it's just a crazy thing to be able to say. And yeah, it's funny that you said it, mm -hmm. but it's also true. You know, it's like we're at a point in our lives where we do have the the freedom to pursue things. And yeah. and and we don't really have to get too too much buy-in for for things that we would want to go after. Yeah, you know, um, so it's really on us. We don't need to ask permission. We need to ask forgiveness. Well, you know, to, to, to in an effort to wrap it up, I mean, I I think that the thing that I the way I've been sort of framing it, and this is with the help of uh, my therapist, is as you if you're a busy person, and most people are busy, um, you kind of have to ask yourself, you know, am I putting life giving things onto my plate or life taking things onto my plate? And are my taking life taking things off of my plate and then putting life giving things on? And you know as an individual what those things are, right? Um, because even in, a, even in a profession like ours in which it's like, hey, it kinda is, it feels like it's all fun and games 
to an extent because we do this, we have these, we're ridiculously lucky and fortunate to have the jobs that we have and to be able to do the things that we do. But even we can still make decisions to put a bunch of life taking things on our plate, that things that don't bring us joy, that things that seem obligatory, things that don't get us into creative flow, whatever those things might be. And so I think going through a list like this, to me, the things that I identified with in the majority of these people is what I would envision being a life giving thing to me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a way to kind of evaluate, all right, again, we're still very, very young and there's, and like you said, there's a, there's so much opportunity and there's and there's so much freedom but what kind of decisions are you gonna make? Are you gonna make decisions that are fear-based, that are designed to uh, fulfill some obligation that you put on yourself or an obligation that you think exists out there from someone or, or fans or whatever? Or are you gonna make decisions to do things that give you life and joy and turn you into Rick Rubin in 20 years? Right? Like what's your version of a satisfied old man full of equanimity. <laughs> if you haven't listened to the Kendrick album, I mean, it's it's about his personal journey, a lot of it through therapy, and like at the very end, the you hear him say, I chose me, I'm sorry, I chose, me. that's the hook. Yeah, I chose me, I'm sorry, and it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot going on there, and I don't fully understand all of it, but yeah, it's like, uh, there's also some Eckhart Tolle in there, so. You should check he it out. He almost was on the list. I didn't mean to I, make the. I, I, have, I have listened to it. I've, li have? I've listened through, through one time. Um, it's not. I mean, I recommend it, but that's, that's, that's not your rec. That's lame to make a Kendrick Lamar album your recommendation. Um, just do it. Uh, just no, do it, man. No, my recommendation is uh, do not share socks with your children. <laughs> okay. All right. You know. N enough said. I mean, if you if you haven't started really, yet, if you if you think to yourself like, yeah, but we kind of like we wear the same socks. Do not let it begin, okay? I'm in the I. The only thing in my Have life you right now, a fungus on your foot, has nothing to do with fungus. It has to do with the availability of socks, because yeah, when you are all taking socks from Dad's drawer because you, Block and you, Shepherd. Do not, you know, they have to do their own laundry in our house. That's how it works. Oh, mm -hmm. and which means laundry doesn't get done. Their laundry doesn't get done, and so there's somewhere in their room there's an abyss of socks. Most of them mine, and so I, I hate it. I hate that I do this. I go on the internet and I buy more socks <laughs> instead instead of making them wash their clothes. Which, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just brought the only thing in my life right now that's not making me happy is the sock situation and I feel like it's all my fault. And so now, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy more socks and I'm gonna create, the drawer in my room that they currently use is gonna be the dummy drawer. They don't, they're don't. they not gonna listen to this episode. And that's where they're gonna get their socks, which will run out very soon. I'm creating a new spot that I'm not gonna tell them about where I actually keep my socks. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't wanna be the dad that has to do this, so just don't begin sharing socks. Your life sucks, man. Yeah. 1888 EarPod 1. Next week, hashtag Ear Biscuits. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.